Greetings, warriors. My name's Pretty, and <sighs> let's let's talk for a moment about World Flipper. World Flipper was one of the first gacha games I ever really reviewed on this channel, and I loved it. I I really really did. I loved it when it came out, and I loved it when I reviewed it. I am thoroughly addicted to this game. I thoroughly enjoy it. I will be playing it quite a lot more. Are you as addicted as I am? Because this is a fun game. <laughs> it is a fun game. I really enjoyed it. Obviously, as you could tell from some of the clips I'm putting in of uh, my old review. <laughs> but I wanted to talk about how something so good failed so miserably. It's unfortunate, like, I know that a lot of people like this game because it's been going on for like, what, two and a half years in Japan? And uh, internationally, we're almost on the first year anniversary come September, which is not very long in terms for like a popular gacha game. But me, as a person who um, likes talking about gacha games, Gotta talk about why this one just kind of faded into obscurity in my mind. So before I get into a little bit of a roast, I guess, um, I want to talk about what the game does right before I uh, brutally terrorize it into the ground. <laughs> I mean, critique it with um, a sad heart. So one of the things the game does exceptionally well is the characters and the character design. Reading through all of the character stories, it's just, each one is so unique and so special. And even if I don't jive with somebody's character design, I enjoy their story, which is amazing. And like, let's talk about some of the character designs. Like, some of them are just so, good and not all of them are even five stars too like around me are my favorite characters design wise and i love them i love using them i will make a team fit around them because heck you do they need to <laughs> and just it radiates style and you can look at a character and be like yep they look cool not they might not be my favorite like but I can acknowledge that they look cool and they're designed well. And like they have a compelling personality behind them. And it, it's really, really nice to see, honestly. And it still keeps up to this day. Another positive is that three to four star units are extremely useful. Like one of the best characters in this game is a three star. And like, that's wonderful. It's so nice that you can build a team and you don't necessarily need to use the five stars. I mean, sure, it's probably better to use the five stars, but like, it's nice not having that pressure. Like, you can pull for whatever unit you think will work for you instead of the latest and shiniest new five star, aka <laughs> <Okay>, Fire Emblem. <laughs> Nothing. Nothing, I didn't say anything. <laughs> and the last real positive I have to talk about this game is just the overall aesthetic and vibe of it. Like, it looks so clean and the pixel art is really, really well done. Like the animations that they do for the pixel art for some of the monsters are insane. Like they look so, so good. And I just find myself staring at the art sometimes and being like, Ah, it's so pretty. It's so... They did such a good job with it. And just the cleanliness of how the game looks, like, both in the maps, in, like, the system user interface and all that stuff, like, it looks good. The pulling mechanic looks really fun, and I, I still get a kick out of it whenever I see the little ball going doo, 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 and hitting, like, a upgrade button. It, it's so nice, and it's just very pleasing to look at overall. And now, unfortunately, I do need to get into the negatives. These are some of the things that I 
purely loved about the game when I first started playing, and now they just flopped. They did not perform the way that I was expecting them to. So, for example, the gameplay. It being pinball is so unique and it's so eye-catching. Like, who would have thunk to make a gotcha game around pinball of all games? Like, okay, you see Genshin, it's open world. You see Fire Emblem, it's a strategy game. You see like Dislight or anything where it's like real time stuff where it's like strategy and RPG and stuff. But no, in World Flipper, it's pinball. And they do such a good job of integrating the fact that this is pinball into their game, except in being unique. So the overall concept of World Flipper is very unique, that it's pinball, right? But it's just that, it's just pinball. There's no variations to it. So you know how other gacha games typically have like events that go on that are a little bit different from the norm to spice things up. For like example, uh, Fire Emblem has stuff like Ponds of Loki or um, Hall of Forms where it's similar, but it's just different enough that you don't get bored. World Flipper doesn't have any of that. It's always two to three stages of pinball unless you're doing a boss fight, then that's one stage, woo, where it's just pinball. You're in a three little line row pinball where you have two little levers and then you have a danger zone behind the levers where you get hurt if you, you know, obviously don't hit it in time. But there's no variation. There's no stages where you have multiple flippers like up higher or like if you look at pinball machines, they are so unique and so intricate. There's some higher elevation stages. There's just a lot of intricacies that World Flipper is not taking advantage of for being pinball. Like, I used to play this game a long time ago where it was just endless pinball. You just kept going up and going up and going up and up and up and up forever and ever, essentially. And that was fun because I got to do something that I could build towards over and over and over again. And of course there was checkpoints, you know, so that like, you know, if you sucked, you could always get back to that checkpoint. But like, why doesn't World Flipper have an endless mode like that? Where you just are trying to constantly climb, beat enemies along the way, but constantly climb up the pinball ladder and reaching certain checkpoints and you get certain rewards for doing that. But no, no, it's just normal pinball. Sure, recently, um, in terms of when I'm recording this, they added a new mode where it's sort of like levels, but like each level is like four and then you, you play four in a row and then you have to go to the next one. And like... It's, it's not the same as doing endless, but it's something, I guess. Or like, you know what, what could be cool is, so in the game, um, some characters have abilities that provide multi-balls. So you have your little string of three, and then there's sometimes that you have more balls. And I, I why can't there be a game mode where your team is separated? Like. Why do we have to be in a conga line all the time? Why can't we just have three independent balls, aka characters, and go nuts? Why do not do we not have that? Like, there's just so many opportunities to create unique spins on the gameplay. And it really, really needs the unique spins on the gameplay because it gets so repetitive. Like, to me, when I'm grinding in World Flipper, it doesn't feel any different to me than playing like a story map. They are the exact same concept, the exact same core principle, but just, it doesn't feel any different. Cause like, sure, you get the story while you're doing the story, woo. But the gameplay is the same as grinding. And same as like boss fights, same as the events and it gets stale. Like, imagine pre, like the first time you're playing like a gotcha game at the start. Think of how often you played it because you enjoyed it, right? 
And then it gets a little stale after you're playing it for months and months and months on end, pretty much the same way. And then boom, they surprise you with a new game mode. Even if it's just a temporary thing, like for Genshin, uh, you know, just like the um, Iridori Festival, where sometimes you had to do like um, tower defense or building up a flower pot. And it was just something different enough that lasted for enough time that you didn't get bored. And that's World Flipper's problem. It gets boring playing pinball. The same iteration of pinball over and over and over and over again. Not only that, are the events. Since I was talking about events earlier, let's let's dive into World Flipper's events, shall we? To put this into context, World Flipper came out in Japan November 27th of 2019. In Japan, World Flipper came out in the United States slash global September 8th 2021 aka about two years behind which okay I get it I get it the international release they didn't want to just plop us in to uh oh gosh what what section would we have been on like two years in the future <laughs> I don't know, but, like, the fact that we are always going to be two years behind hurts, because that's the rate that they're doing the events. They're kind of keeping the same amount of space in between events. And, like, it's weird. It's really, really, really weird. Like, for example, Christmas. Christmas, you know, it is celebrated in December. Unless you're celebrating Christmas in July. Then, uh, you, you need to find a different holiday to celebrate in July. <laughs> but, so, in the Japanese release of World Flipper, the Christmas event, aka the Christmas banner, started December 16th, 2019. A couple of months, or a month or so after it released, right? Worldwide, September 27th, 2021. It feels wrong to be playing a Christmas event when October hasn't even happened, where Thanksgiving and Halloween haven't even happened. And it just feels unfun. And I don't feel invested in any of the events when they come out because I know that it's not ever going to line up ever for the worldwide release. Like the summer event already happened. And we're not even at summer yet. We're like at the beginning of summer. And it just, I can't get invested into the event when it's not at least closer to the time that it's supposed to be. Like, okay, I would be totally fine if we had a Christmas event in November. Totally fine with it. Because then, oh well, yeah, it's close enough. Or like a Christmas event one month after, you know, I, it's close enough. But having it be all the way in September, it just, it's so uninviting. And no matter what, it, we're always going to be f behind. All of our Christmas events are going to start in September for the worldwide release. Are you excited? Because I am not. It's upsetting because I, I do follow World Flipper. I like try to keep up with the Japanese release because I like seeing what characters they come up with. Like the, the Cypher alt. I need, I need her. She's so pretty. I love Cypher. She's one of my favorite characters in this game. And guess what? I have to wait until probably August of 2023 to get this alt that I've seen that came out last year in Japan. It hurts. Because on the one hand, I'm excited. I like seeing that the units are coming out and like it's nice seeing which ones you can roughly save for i think that's nice but the fact that you have to wait for two ish years that just feels like wrong to me and i understand that they didn't want to immediately drop us in 
to match uh, the Japanese release. And I understand that there are anniversary events that tie to, like, the specific date that things were launched, yada, yada, yada. But it just feels so bad. I know the majority of my audience is Fire Emblem Heroes players. So let's take it as this, okay? So, you know that in Japan, Ascendant Heroes become a thing, right? You, you, you like the game, you like seeing who's coming out, so you want to save for them. You see Ascendant Heroes, and then you have to wait two whole years to even get the first one that you saw. And by that point, who knows what would have happened in the next two years while you were waiting to catch up. Because I've heard things that, about the game that, that changed in terms of, like, events, in terms of, like, other things, uh, characters, stuff like that. And I, I, we're just stuck waiting. Sure, we got the events that are coming out, but whoever is excited for the Gotcha Games first events? Like, let's be honest here. Come on. For Fire Emblem specifically, like, who really wants to go back to the time where Tempest Trials were bad? Who really wants to go back and play some of the early events that were not properly designed? That's what we're stuck doing in World Flipper. Not only that, the events are just not good. So, for example, like, Events last for a very long time in World Flipper, which is nice on the one hand, but also awful on the other, because it, you can easily blitz these events, and it sucks. It feels so boring because it's the exact same thing as the normal gameplay. The events are never different. Oh, hey, look, it's the same exact serpent dragon, just a different color. Ooh, this one's yellow instead of red, and it sucks. I never feel excited seeing an event in World Flipper now. All I see is the same exact gameplay that just doesn't excite me. The rewards don't excite me because I know that it's the same exact thing, just a new element and it's sad. It really is sad because there's so much potential. But they just don't have it right now. Who knows? Maybe some of the stuff I talked about earlier about the gameplay changes in the two years that we're lacking behind. Like, who knows? Maybe they do have an endless mode. If you're, if you play Japanese version, please let me know. <laughs> please let me know. I'm gonna go crazy. But it just is so repetitive, and it feels so stale. And the events never bring anything new and exciting to keep people interested in the game. And now a key thing to gacha games is pulling, you know, pulling new characters, weapons, sometimes, you know, that excitement, that thrill, the addiction, what they try to get you addicted to at least. While I did sing its praises on how it looks, I hate pulling in this game. The rates? are fantastic. 5% for a 5 star, 25% for a 4 star, and 70% uh, for a 3 star. It's not hard to get the currency for pulling in this game either. It's, they're quite generous. But oh God, does it suck to have a character at a level 100 and then you still have eight copies of them that you literally can't do much with. The most you can do is like turn them into experience to level up other characters. It feels so good to have that, yeah! In other games. So, I'm, I keep defaulting to Fey and Genshin because those are the two that are most popular in my mind right now um in fey when you have extra copies you can turn them either into feathers so you know feathers can be used to upgrade somebody's level awesome cool or you could use them for fodder where they provide use to other units Genshin, when you get extra copies they turn into star glitter or whatever it's called where you can purchase things 
purchase witch wishes, purchase, purchase other things, purchase characters. In those two games, they turn into something. In Alchemy Stars, which uh, I'll be talking about very soon, I promise. <laughs> In Alchemy Stars, when you have extras of characters, you can dismantle them and turn them into currency that you can purchase with, like Genshin. And, like, they provide a use. Sure, experience is nice. But when you have a million experience stacked up that you can just use to instantly get a character to level 100, it doesn't feel good. It doesn't feel worth it to pull in this game. Because I have core sets of teams for all of the elements, right? They do well enough. They do well enough. I don't... Like, sure, sometimes I'll pull for, like, the latest new, like, character. <laughs> AKA, AKA this pretty lady. Oh my god, she's so pretty. <laughs> but, like, it just never feels worth it to pull anymore. Because I think I have pretty much all of their three-star characters. I'm missing maybe, like, a couple of four-stars. I'm obviously missing more five-stars. But, like, it just doesn't feel worth it anymore. I'm so bored of it. When I get a five-star, I'm just like, oh, okay. Um, sure, I already have you at level 100 because I really like you and use you a lot. But thanks for coming home instead of a character that I don't have. It sucks. We're 10 months into this game and I'm bored of pulling. It's not, it's not exciting. And that's a bad thing for gotchas. I get gambling and the addiction behind gotchas is bad. There, that could be a whole video on its own. <laughs> I have my experience with that. But there needs to be that draw because if you don't pull characters the gameplay gets boring even more boring in terms of a uh, world flipper it just feels like the same thing over and over and over again and it sucks i've heard that in the future it does get a little better for like you can do stuff with extra characters i don't remember exactly what but um again if you play the japanese release let me know but hey we'd still be two years behind anyways so so one of the things i did sing world flippers praises um in my first review was the multiplayer aspect you play real-time multiplayer with two other people sometimes it's really really fun and most of the time, it sucks. A lot of the events uh, tend to focus on having really difficult bosses where you need to play multiplayer. So if you want some of the stuff that you get from events or you want stuff that you get from bosses that you need a higher level of, you have to, you have to be multiplayer. You have no choice. It must be multiplayer. You can do a lower level one, sure, but you are not going to get the stuff that you need. And normally that wouldn't be a problem. So for like Genshin, you you have multiplayer. You need to do multiplayer sometimes to run some artifacts and stuff. It makes it a lot easier, right? But you can run it by yourself at the highest level. World flipper, uh-uh. <laughs> Maybe it's just because my teams are not very good anymore, but like, you can't. You have to play with other people, no matter what. And I would be fine if matchmaking was nice. I could join an event the day of, get into the boss fight that I need to do to have multiplayer for, and wait over five minutes. There have been times that I have been waiting for 10 minutes to do a boss fight. And it's not like I'm doing some super obscure boss thing. I'm doing like the bosses that are like being focused on like, oh, you get double drops if you do this one or an event boss. Sometimes I have waited for 10 minutes to do a thing that I wanted to do to grind currency that I wanted to upgrade my characters for. It just doesn't make any sense to me. Like, I... <laughs> people in 
this game are significantly higher level than me. So I don't understand why, like, I'm stuck waiting. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. And do you know what makes waiting even more fun? Not being able to do anything while you wait. In World Flipper, you just get to wait on the multiplayer matching screen and do nothing. You can't leave the screen to like, oh, you know, do a story quest or anything. No, you have to wait. You have to wait. Keep your phone open. You never know when somebody's gonna join your lobby. It's frustrating. Cause like, those 10 minutes, I could have been like, reading a story or like, cleaning up like, some leveling that I haven't yet to do. Just something to do while I was waiting, but no, I got to sit and wait and stare at the screen and do nothing, absolutely nothing. And it, it's dumb. The fact that you can't do anything while waiting for multiplayer makes the matchmaking feel even worse. And here's the thing, to get the event items or boss items that you need to like progress your characters, you need to do a lot of the bosses and just waiting and then going in and doing the fight and then you gotta wait again. It makes the grind so, so much worse. Oh, hi, it's Editing Pretty. Um, I wanted to make a quick note. Um, <laughs> apparently, as I was making this video, uh, World Flipper actually had a pretty sizable update fixing a couple of my main problems mainly um so in multiplayer uh if you are waiting too long they will force a bot in which is great and now that there is a auto start function so um if you are starting a battle and you know you're going to grind it a lot you could just press auto start and it'll um take care of all of the multiplayer stuff for you and you just have to essentially sit there and do nothing on your phone um do nothing else on world flipper and just wait and wait and wait and wait well these are good changes i i, I don't think they're good enough to actually remedy the entire problem i'm talking about here but i wanted to put that in here since uh you know that happened while i was making this video and the grind itself isn't even good so this is my last negative point is the grind I get it. I get it I get it gotcha games always have a grind and it's fine I actually enjoy <laughs> doing the grind I, I, I find it fun to manage all of the items that I need and figuring out okay I need XXX YYY for this character to become stronger and complete my team I like that. It's fun. It's a fun management type thing, right? <sighs> but with World Flipper, man, it just feels awful. It feels so awful. So you have the multiplayer aspect where you're just stuck waiting and waiting and waiting forever and ever and ever. But the grind is the exact same as playing the story. It's the same types of maps the same types of enemies generally it's just the same there's no real uniqueness to it and okay i get it some some gotcha games don't really have like any difference um in how you grind i get it like in heroes if you're doing like the um training tower it's the same concept right yeah okay but at least with heroes there are other game modes you can do to grind too. You you feel feel tired of the training tower? Why don't you go around to the arena or check out one of the events that are going on? But no, in World Flipper, it's all the exact same. No matter what you pick, it's all the exact same. All the exact same. Something that would make it better is if you had like an auto battle where you could just say, "I want to use all this much stamina." Just run it over and over and over again. Like in um, a newer game, Dislight. In Dislight, you could just put characters in a map, say, go wild, and then you can go and do other stuff while it grinds for you. That is nice. Worth Flipper, no. You have to do the entire map. 
and then you have to restart it. You can't let it go in the background. You have to be active with it. And it makes the grind feel so much worse because you have to devote a huge part of your mental energy into doing it. And it makes building characters less fun. And that's the point of grinding, right? To see all of that hard work and effort you put in to a character pay off. But in World Flipper, you don't have that because you are just stuck doing the same thing over and over. So that's how World Flipper failed. It failed in terms of being creative. Sure, the core concept was very unique and very exciting, even to me now. Like, I still find the concept of a gacha game surrounding pinball to be exciting, but it failed to innovate. It failed to be different. It failed in finding new ways to make World Flipper amazing. As, as, as harsh as I was on World Flipper in this video, World Flipper Forever is going to hold a special place in my heart. I don't think I'm going to uninstall a game. I just don't think I'm going to play it much anymore. I'll hop in once every couple of weeks, play it for a little bit, and then put it down. It's just hard. I, I for, After my review, and before my review, honestly, because I was playing it for the review, I would just play it over and over and over again and just be excited about it. But now I can't. I just can't. It's the same thing over and over and over again. And why would I spend my time doing something that's the same over and over and over again when I could play a gacha game that knows how to innovate, that knows how to be unique, knows how to do really good events, really good characters, really good everything that World Flipper has, but better. And that game is Alchemy Stars. So, um, keep your eyes peeled for, um, a sister video to this, essentially, on how a gacha game could do everything right compared to, uh, World Flipper. So, yeah, what are your thoughts on, a uh, World Flipper? Um, are you like me, where you're just bored of the game, frustrated with the game? Or are you um, somebody who recently got into it and are super excited about it? Like, let me know, please, down below your thoughts on World Flipper. Will I ever make another World Flipper video again? I don't know. We'll just have to see. World Flipper has a lot of problems that I just can't get over. Sure. It's still gonna be on my phone. Like looking at the pretty art. Thank you guys so much for watching and subscribing. Keep fighting your battles. And I will see you guys next time. Toodaloo!